Hey, Christy Glass here with Anna Harakovic of Mochi Mochi Land. And you might hear a little hum in the back, but we're she's about to have a baby in like five minutes, so we're keeping the air on for baby mama right here. Okay, stop complaining about the sound. Um, so tell us about. Oh my gosh, look. I have a tiny alpaca just like yours. <laughs> Look, they can be friends. They're cousins. Yeah. So tell us your fiber story. Do you want to start with the name of your company? Yes, the name is Mochi Mochi Land, which people ask me about all the time. Um, and it's Mochi Mochi is a Japanese word, and I'm not Japanese, pretty obviously. I can, I'm looking and I don't look that <laughs> Japanese. But um, Mochi, it's like if you've heard of, I think people have heard of Mochi ice cream. Mm -hmm. And Mochi Mochi is related to Mochi ice cream. It's delicious ice cream with a sticky rice exterior, sticky rice coat mm -hmm. on it, um, and it's delicious and heavenly if you haven't tried it. Um, the word mochi mochi is sort of an onomatopoeia okay. that means like mochi like, like sticky, squishy. Oh. So I love that word. Um, but the reason it's Japanese and all of that is when I was 17, I went to Japan as an exchange student uh -huh. and lived there for a year with the family. And um, it was, you know, an amazing experience. It what was, made you want to do that? What made me want to do it was when I was, I think about 12, my family had an exchange student from Japan come stay with us. Uh -huh. um, and it, this isn't like a direct exchange kind of thing. Like I didn't go stay with her family. Right, right, right. But um, but it was so fun to have this older, cool, um, new sister. But she was like Japanese, so like everything in the country was new to her. And um, so, but she was like just the sweetest person, and we're still good friends. Um, but the thing that really made me want to go to Japan was her mother would send her care packages and in those care packages they would just be full of candy from Japan yeah, yeah they just had the cutest packaging and the flavors were amazing like stuff we didn't have like melon yeah. and this was in 1990 something so um, it was all like completely new to me like we didn't have any of the Japanese anime stuff I'm so I was like I have to go to this magical land magical land of candy yeah because it's, <laughs> that's how I pictured well, it because all the packaging and all of the sort of aesthetic of what we perceive to be Japan here in America is like totally magical yeah it's awesome yeah and it, it really so, and it really is like that like it really is it is like I mean it's it sounds very reductive to say that yeah. but um, you know of course going there as a student living there for a year the family like I experienced so many different aspects of the culture and mm -hmm. learned so much and the history is like so different from ours and it's just it's a fascinating place but I did spend a lot of time in like stationery stores yeah. and just like soaking in all of the like adorable characters and yeah. I couldn't believe that like you know women would have cell phone cases with Hello Kitty on them and yeah. like, like that was totally normal and men would wear oh, no. would read comics on the train yeah. and stuff and, like all of them businessmen and their like suit and tie and stuff and I was like this is so fascinating like it's like you can like it's okay to be an adult and still enjoy cute, sweet things. Um, you can hold on to really... a piece of your childhood, even in adulthood. Yes. Yeah. I went to this bank. I had this bank that I had like a little bank account in. And the bank's like color was Pepto-Bismol pink. Yes. I'm in. Yeah. I'm totally in It was amazing. That. So, you know, I was like just totally drawn to that. And after coming back, just still kind of couldn't get it out of my head. Mm -hmm. I studied Japanese in college. I um, went back to Japan uh, right after college on another like grant um, to study wartime Japanese film, as you do. <laughs> like oh I don't know goodness. why. I'm not really sure why that was my focus. But what were you majoring in besides Japanese? I it was like film and television was okay. my my it was sort of a combined major mm -hmm, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, but anyway, it was a great opportunity to go back yeah. and kind of just like be back in this like. Magical land of cuteness. I think I would love Japan too. You would. I'm, yeah. I'm a little intimidated because I have some shellfish allergies. Oh and I yeah, feel you like need to pay attention to that. The cuisine of Asian countries is intimidating to me. Mm -hmm. Feel a little scary. But my friend of mine went to like Tokyo Disney and her pictures. Oh, I love Tokyo Disney. She, had, like, she said everyone had these like popcorn like holders that they wear on their neck. <laughs> Like hers was Mr. <laughs> Potato Head or something. And then you go to the different lands and get different popcorn. Does this sound? This sounds. Like 
a dream. Yes. Like a yeah. Japanese dream. Yeah. That's how that's how a lot oh of stuff gosh, is. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I think I mean I guess the way I think of it now, like looking back on it, it's like it's a great place to visit. It's a great place to live for a year. I don't think I'd wanna like really try to establish a life there for a few different reasons but um but the people really are wonderful especially if you can like get to know some people on a little bit more of a personal level mm -hmm. um the food is amazing and i don't know it's just it's incredible and so you're knitting so the knitting oh and i yeah, actually yeah, yeah. did learn to knit in japan too oh. which um, so when you were an exchange student when i was an exchange student it kind of was just a coincidental thing but i had two host sisters while i was staying there and the older one had learned to knit just from her friend and so kind of like one day brought home some yarn and she's like hey do you want to try this and i was like sure and so it was kind of a thing that we could do that didn't really involve language because she didn't speak any english oh yes i didn't even I, think of that my japanese got pretty good but i don't remember at what point you know i'm sure it wasn't great it wasn't knitting language obviously right, right. so she just kind of showed me the basic stitches and i made um a furry Fun for a purple scarf. Yeah, fun my for first all the rage back then. Project. Yes, I loved it. I was really proud of it. Yeah. And then after that one, I made a like blue, blue and white fun for a scarf. Mm -hmm. So like those are my first projects. And that's not easy to work with. I guess that's true. Like it's I didn't really think about it at the time because you don't know. Yeah. Um, but that was my first experience in knitting, and I didn't like get super really into it until like when I was in college, just a few years later. Um, but that is where it started, coincidentally, sort of. That's why it um, should be Mochi Mochi. Yeah, so it's got this Nigni con connection. Yeah. Um, and then I really started knitting a lot more when I was in college dating this guy. His mom um, lived in the area, and she was a huge crafter. And uh, she really was very inspiring. And she would, I think she kind of like was like, okay, this is how we're going to bond. She's right. Great. She is now my mother-in-law. Yes. Yes. It all worked out. Lucky. Yeah. She like would buy me yarn and be, and she taught me so many things and uh, so I just got like super into it. And if it weren't for her, if it weren't for Bonnie, I, I'm quite sure I would not be <laughs> doing what well, I am so now. That's so interesting. So it's so isn't it interesting how like things just lead to things yeah. and you know yeah, Bonnie. It's pretty yeah. Bonnie yeah. is amazing and she happens to have uh, what is probably the world's largest yarn stash. Um, and Describe it, is, it. Well, it's mainly in one giant room, which used to be their like big library, but it's just like filled all these shelves, and it goes around the room. I mean, it's a room that's big enough for like there's a couch in the middle of the room, and there's a piano in the room. It's just huge, uh -huh. um, but it's like floor to ceiling yarn, um, and it's. I think it's pretty organized right now, <laughs> but it's also like the kind of place where you can just like go and kind of like grab something and it's yeah. not a big deal. It's not like a museum. And then it yeah. spills down some stairs a little bit maybe and into some other rooms where she also has lots of uh, lots of fabric and whoa, it's intense. But she's so like generous with it because yeah. um, I probably shouldn't say this, but I've I've blogged about it before with photos, uh -huh. and every once in a while somebody will email me and be like, "Hey, does your mother-in-law happen to have this yarn that I just ran out of and I can't find it anywhere because it's discontinued?" And I'll like forward it to her, and she always says like, "Oh, let me go check." Like she's so nice. That's awesome. Yeah, and she never has the yarn because no. it's like, yeah, what are the chances? But yeah. um, but she always like you know, is it's a very open collection. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. It makes me feel a little less guilty about my stash. Yeah, it also has that effect. So she's really <laughs> doing knitters a lot of good psychologically yes, yes, by yes. maintaining this yeah. like um, giant room full giant of giant room. Yeah, and she just like she just loves yarn and all the colors and um, you know, I think in the past she and her husband have had some you know, conversations of about course. the stash, but she can point out that like, hey, you collect, uh, well, he collects a lot of things himself, yeah. but he happens to collect very beautiful, fancy guitars. And yeah. it's like, you have this collection. Yeah. This is my collection. Yeah. This is what I do. I think it's really yeah. important that this each spouse has a thing. Because then, you know, when he walks, my husband walks through the door with three boxes of running shoes, and I'm like, yeah, that's <laughs> what I see there is I get six sweaters worth of yarn. Right. That's what I see there. It sounds like your husband and my husband have something in common. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so you went to school, film, Jap Japanese, mm -hmm. 
And did you work in an industry besides your business before the business? Um, briefly. <laughs> I, um, we moved to New York um, after college and my husband wanted, my husband wanted to be in TV, so we moved to New York. Um, and I got a job at an art agency, like an illustration agency, um, representing some really amazing artists, uh, a lot of them from Europe and all over really. Um, to do different uh, projects with magazines and ad agencies. So I was a junior creative agent was my title and um, It was really it was kind of cool in a lot of ways like I got exposed to a lot of stuff that I didn't Know existed like I remember once yeah. I got to go to this meeting at the kid robot headquarters that were in New York at that time and it was like very cool like just like a really cool company and like all these art toys everywhere um, and then after I was there for um, not that long, maybe six months to a year, we actually opened a little gallery like in conjunction with the agency. So um, a little gallery space and hosting lots of different, like really cool shows. And it was a nice, I feel like it was a nice mix. It was like um, supporting inter really interesting, fun artists, but the art was always like really accessible mm -hmm. and relatively affordable. And once a year we had a uh, plush toy show. So, which I didn't even know that there was a, such a thing as like art plush yeah. toys. Yeah. Um, but we would have like this, this, just like amazing. I mean, it was like I can't even describe it. Like fun, fun, beautiful stuff. Yeah. Really in the gallery, if you can imagine, like the coolest stuffed animals you've ever seen. And, and were they all knitted, or they could be any know. any materials? As long any as materials. Plush. There were. I think I don't think there were too many knitted things. Maybe crochet. Were they handmade, though? Yes, all yeah. handmade. Mm -hmm. um, you know, felt um, mm -hmm. I could name off maybe a few artists if I can think of them. But uh, Jenny Harada was one of my favorites, and she does like cool fuzzy monsters. And um, so, like, it was kind of around the same time. Like, we were doing these cool shows, but t but I was thinking to myself, like, I don't think like being an agent for artists is really my thing. Like, um, it's, like dealing with contracts and stuff, and like it's a lot of communication, which is like great, but it, like. Maybe I, I started thinking like you know I I knit stuff and I'm so inspired by this like cool plush art and maybe I should just I could totally make some toys and I wasn't thinking like I'm gonna have a career doing this but it was just like it was really like I want to do something fun and cool for myself um, I was really kind of tired of knitting hats and scarves. Um, and so I was like, it would be really fun to make some toys for my friends. And actually the first toys that I knit were um, in the shape of our gallery's logo and I gave them to my coworkers as like a little commemoration kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, so that's kind of just how that started. And I was like, you know, at that time, well, and maybe now too, but like you start something new and you want to put it on, on the computer, on the computer. On the internet. <laughs> on the internet. You want likes. <laughs> Yeah, so I started a blog mm -hmm. and um, started putting my stuff out there and Flickr was huge at that time. Yes, I started Flickr. posting some things on Flickr and kind of was like really surprised that like immediately people were commenting on the Flickr stuff saying like knitters, saying like, oh, I really want to make that, do a pattern. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I didn't even like... I, I wasn't even writing notes, I was just knitting. Right. Yeah. Um, so it was really from that, like, I was like, oh, okay, I guess I could make patterns. And um, some very nice people, uh, one, one person who's actually still a tester for me, like, from way back, her name is Angela Tong, and she's a designer herself mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, but she volunteered to test a pattern for me, and she, like, helped me figure out even how to write a pattern, mm -hmm. and, um, and it was still just like, this is what I'm doing while I figure out what I want to do next. Yeah. It was really, I was in that mode and, you know, had this husband who was very supportive and he's just like, that's fine with me and, you know, just do what you need to do. Yeah. Um, I love husbands like that. Yeah. They're the yeah. best. Um, so, yeah, I got the husband and the mother-in-law. They're a good package. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I was just really having fun with it and I had, like, immediately after making those first few toys I was like I have all these other ideas and started yeah. like filling up a notebook with them and just started at it and that's really kind of where it started and I don't remember exactly the timeline but you know I got comfortable with writing patterns and then I got an email from Amy Singer of Nitty saying like hey why don't you submit something and I was like oh my god 
god wow yeah. yes yeah. so I did and she accepted it and then that like brought a huge wave of people to my website mm -hmm. and um, do you remember what that project was in Nitty? oh yeah I should have brought it out it's the it's called woodens mm -hmm. w-o-o-d-i-n-s it's this log it's a knitted log and mm -hmm. it has these little they're kind of like um, you know Miyazaki Hayao or Hayao Miyazaki? No. My uh, my neighbor Totoro. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Like inspired by that okay. kind of log. These little white kind of wood woodland creatures that live inside the log because it's a hollow log. Uh -huh. So you cool. can put them in and take them out. And um, so it was it was a, a toy. Yeah. Of course it was yeah. a toy. Yeah, yeah. That's all. It, no. Yeah. Once I started. I don't think of these as toys because. Well, yeah. They're I think creatures. of them creatures. Yeah. But, but once I started making yeah. toys, I would. That's like all I've done. I knit a hat for my mom. Mm -hmm. Like eight years ago because mm -hmm. she requested it but I really don't I don't make other stuff it's kind of yeah narrow. yeah I just I but this whole concept of art toy is new to me so I'm glad that we're establishing it because yeah. of course it's a toy it's like and a kid would love that especially a baby would love putting it in taking it out yeah. putting it in that's like what they do for a year yeah like in out again in out yeah. right yeah so talk about let's go back a couple beats too first of all I don't know why I've never thought of this before because I have an agent. I'm an actor. Of course, there's an agent for illustrators. Mm -hmm. So cool. It just makes my whole like mind blow about like oh like all of these illustrators have people helping them and people need illustrators for their publications and their websites yeah. and all those things. So cool. And then let's talk about art toys as opposed to toys. Do you okay. Want to help people understand what that means right. to you. Um, I think like really the biggest distinction for me is that art toys are something that it's okay as an adult to mm, okay. collect and buy. But you know, they're usually um, handmade or if they're made of um, pl vinyl or plastic, then they're, you know, designed by an artist and yeah. then they're in, you know, they partner with someone to actually make them. Um, but it's like collectible stuff and, uh, you know, usually they have like ideas you haven't seen before, mm -hmm. they're kind of just uh, fun and different, but sometimes they're just like very cute and sweet and mm -hmm. like something you want. And so I think there's plenty of art toys that kids could play with yeah. that are safe for them mm -hmm. and are fine and everything, but I think the emphasis is on the maker, like the creativity behind it, and it's not licensed, you know, mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. So what about the, so what came next, books? Yeah, and that was another thing um, that like I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll kind of like keep doing this for a while. I had the website. I started selling a few patterns online because it was right at the time that Ravelry started mm -hmm. too. So I kind of got into Ravelry, and it was like a very I, I don't know. It was a very innovative time in yeah. like online knitting community, um, and I got. I was lucky enough to get an email from an editor saying like, hey, I found your work online. I think maybe Flickr, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Um, have you thought about doing a book? And I was like, well, now I'm thinking about yeah. it. <laughs> Thanks for the idea. Yeah. Um, so I, that turned into, I mean, it was a long process, but I met with her because I was in New York, um, which was great. And it was interesting how like she approached me but even after that, like, I had to write a proposal. Yeah. And then she kind of got, like, her job got moved to a different type of books. So, like, I was working with somebody else that I didn't really know. So it was kind of like starting over in a certain way, I guess. Yeah. And, like, like, you had to fit their sort of communication style or yeah. process. Right, right. So it was just, like, a longer process of, like, making sure that I know what I'm doing, which I didn't at first, of mm -hmm. course. I had to, like, learn, like, how to write a proposal. Yeah. That was the first thing. And then, like, what makes a knitting book? And, um, but I did... <laughs> I don't know, like, yeah, because there's like, a difference between buying something and using it and enjoying it and, like, trying to make it. It's yeah, totally and different. in most knitting books have how to knit. Right. They have those pages, which always yeah. blows my mind, but they have to because it's a book. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, which is also an interesting thing because I guess they have, like, part of the, the publisher, like, part of the great thing about working with them, like, when we were talking about initially making it, they were like, oh, we have this catalog of illustrations for how to knit, mm -hmm. and then you can we can work with these and... Yeah. Um, it was interesting how that worked. At least worked. you didn't have to do that part. Yeah, that was more like an end, like a not, not an index, but a what do you call it? Like a uh, reference page. Or yeah, yeah. How toward to the end of the book. techniques page. Something right. Like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I could mainly focus on fun designs mm -hmm. and um, fun characters, and that turned into my book Knitting Mochi Mochi, which came out in 2010. That was your first one. Yes. I think I might have that one. Does that have the gnome in it? 
It does not. Okay, so maybe I don't have that You one. have the second one. Oh, okay. Teeny Tiny Mochi Mochi. Okay, that okay. Came out in 2011. And that kind of was a fun development, too, because after I submitted everything for this first book, which had some smaller things, um, but mostly larger projects, um, none of which I have out here right now. It's okay. Um, but then I was, like, exhausted, because it's, it's a big, under, you know, it's a big push toward the end, especially making a book and uh, but but at the same time I was like so tired from all of that but I still wanted to like knit something and have a new project but something a little bit new so I started this challenge for myself for a month to knit something really tiny yeah every day something new and tiny and not making patterns but just like make something different every like day and freestyle. Post it on my blog. Mm -hmm. yeah put it on my blog people reacted really nicely to it and gave me lots of suggestions uh, after that month was up I decided to continue it on a weekly basis and that continued for like two years, which I didn't really expect it to, but it just kind of became this habit. And it was a nice like thing I did on Fridays. It was like a little creative exercise because mm -hmm. it really would only take like two hours. Yeah. Um, for me, three or four. Well, <laughs> just kidding. on average, two I'm getting hours. faster at your patterns. And some of them are better than others. Yeah. You can look back at them on my website. Um, <laughs> but uh, but then it, I was talking to my uh, my eight uh, oh, wait, my editor. Mm -hmm. And she was like, do you have any thoughts on, like, something else to do? And I, like, that didn't even occur to me that I would, like, start making another book. But I was like, oh, well, I've been doing this project and I happen to have, like, all of these designs and miniature knits. So that's how that turned into that. And, like, I liked how it was, like, I think that's really nice how it was, like, um, I wasn't like, oh, I have to write a book and what am I going to mm -hmm. do? And, but it was just like, this is something I really wanted to do anyway. Mm -hmm. And I've really tried to do that over the past. It's been about 10 Ten years that I've been doing Mochi Mochi Land now, which seems crazy. That's so awesome. I know. Yeah, it's also, it seems kind of weird, but. <laughs> well, you know, that's what's so cool about careers. Yeah. You never know. I, I mean, this is, I guess this is technically my career because I spend time in it, but like, I never knew I'd have a YouTube channel about knitting. Yeah. I never would have said that. Like, you know, so it's so cool. Life is yeah. cool. Life can be very cool. And you did a big version too. That was your third yes. book. Yes, Huge and Huggable was my Fourth, fourth. So book. what was third? I skipped. Third, third. was super scary, mochi mochi. Super scary. Like, yeah, and which it turns out like I, I mean it was not scary at all, which mm -hmm. was never the intention. But monsters and mm -hmm. um, creepy stuff, and that one was a lot of fun to do. Huge and huggable mochi mochi, large projects, um, which was also a blast because I could incorporate more techniques in those. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, because the tiny needles, it, it's tiny. Yeah. It's it is hard. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can do color work tiny, but mm -hmm. it's more fun to do color work if it's big, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so that was fourth, and then I did have a fifth book called Adventures in Mochi Mochi Land, which is mostly miniature knits, um, again, but it's uh, written as like a story for the first half or three quarters, and then the patterns are in the back. Did you write the story? So I did. Well, it's three stories, actually. Uh -huh. It's kind of like, <laughs> it was a crazy project. Uh, because it's like when you think about it, picture books are never this long, but it, like mm -hmm. was, it's like a full size knitting book, uh -huh. so the stories are like there's a lot to it, mm -hmm. and the photography was intense because mm -hmm. it's like making these immersive like dioramas of mochi mochi like land. a little scene. Yeah, right? like making stuff like that, which is like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of also a lot of knitting and a lot of work, yeah. and a lot of planning and a lot of yeah. I mean, my, but fortunately, I, my photographer that I worked with with all my books is amazing. Her name is Brandy Simons. She lives um, in Oklahoma, which is where my parents are, mm -hmm. so I get to go see them and work with her. That's cool. Yeah, so that was my fifth book, and that came out in 2015, and I'm taking a little bit of a break from okay. books right now. Well, she's having babies now. <laughs> yeah. She's making babies. That's kind of how that happened. So, you have a photo contest. And I remember I wanted to enter it so much, but then I was like, oh, I have to knit all these mochis. And I just didn't have time, like, with the deadline. But I, it's, like, in the back of my head. Because you do it every year, right? Yeah. And people make little scenes. People do all sorts of stuff. And yeah. I think it's really interesting how some people do full scenes. Some people, the photo is, like, one thing that they've knit, but it's, like, a funny or interesting or cute photo. Mm -hmm. um, animals is always a good, like, with your pet. Mm -hmm. you, know, with it, you know, yeah, like, animals. Yeah. That's a good way to like get far <laughs> the one, with one the voting project. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's just a lot of fun. Like people really do different stuff, and every year I'm like, people must be really tired of this, and nobody's gonna enter, and it's gonna be embarrassing. <laughs> 
And then I'm pleasantly surprised yeah. and amazed even by like the stuff that people submit. And I mean, there's prizes, but I think I think people mostly do it just because it's like fun and fun to share what you're making. Yeah. And and like I think like me, like it's just like it's a lot of work to make something like this giant like yeah. glacier with penguins all yeah. over it. Um, but I had a blast. Yeah. And if you have a vision, I mean, when you sort of tap into that art feeling in your body, which I think we all know what I'm talking about, you just, it's motivating. Yeah. And you're like, one more, oh, I need one more. And you're kind of like, ah, oh, then, okay, it's okay, and you just do it. Because you have this whole vision, you know? One of them is stuck in the side here. This penguin is stuck in the side. Look at this, so cute. And I, I think it's it. like that feeling, I mean, I think as knitters, we're a little bit more tapped into that, like, when you're a kid doing something real creative and not mm -hmm. everybody continues that into adulthood but yeah. I have to say like I do think there's something in particular about making knitting toys mm -hmm. and like to make something that looks back at you and like instantly has a personality mm -hmm. and then you instantly want to like if not play with it at least to like you kind of create a little story around it mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. and I just think that I don't know that's kind of this like vital energy that I get from that and I think a lot of people do once they try it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about stop motion. Yeah. I had the gnome knitting the heart shared a million gajillion times. Yeah. Did that one go like viral? I guess you could say it. Sarah Jessica Parker posted it. Oh she did? Yeah among other people and then somebody was telling me I was at Vogue Knitting Live in January and somebody came up and said that she had had a conversation with somebody like like something with her bank that was going on and like she was emailing like a customer service thing and then like it got sorted out or whatever and then like the email that she got back had that gif in it like from her bank <laughs> like that is so funny kind of weird and crazy but that's but hysterical. i'm like i'm kind of cool with like there's you know the credit kind of gets lost along yeah. the way but i'm you know it's just it's pretty exciting mm -hmm. um so that, yeah, that was, was shared a lot yeah. So talk about the stop motion. Well, because when was the first stop motion? Was it for Sesame Street? I'm talking about Sesame Street too. Well, we will talk about that. That's not. That I, I started like maybe five years ago or okay. so, just making little things for fun. I took. I did take a stop motion class because I was like, I think it's good to always be trying a few different little things mm -hmm. that inspire you. Um, the class was discouraging because it was super like old school, making an armature. Mm. Sculpt the head onto it. I have my guy around here somewhere. He's kind of creepy. He's like this old man. Um, but it was like half of the whole class was just like making this big model. And then we used these sets where you bolt like the model into it. So the model had to have like a thing that you could bolt into his feet. Mm -hmm. And we used this special software to make it work. And like I couldn't figure out the software with my camera for the longest time. Like it didn't want to work together. So it was like it was just like intense, and mm -hmm. I remember the instructor was like, "Most of you won't really like be doing this more because it's like so time consuming and it's not fun." <laughs> I was just like, "Boy, this guy is like so jaded." Totally. Yeah. What are you doing here, teaching this but, class if you're so jaded? Yeah, you know, clearly he had had a career that was a little disappointing at times. Yeah, I don't maybe. know. Um, anyway. They still have stop motion film though, don't they? I mean, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It just is, and... it just is really time intensive. Like it's, it's hard, but Fox what holes? I discovered yeah. on my own after a few months of feeling like I'm never going to do that again, um, was that stop motion doesn't have to be like this super precise thing with big models and you know, you, you don't have to get every single second. No, you really don't. And it can Skip. still be so fun and like have fewer frames. Yeah, frames per second. Um, and I discovered with the stuff that I was already making, like it's lightweight. It's kind of bendable. Mm -hmm. I don't need special wires yeah. or special sets because like I can just take a piece of felt and put it over a piece of styrofoam and take my little gnome or whatever and stick it in with a straight pin yeah. and make him walk across the mm -hmm. stage, you know? Mm -hmm. So... And Once our I've, brain fills in the yeah. rest. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. If the gnome skipped a little farther than it maybe just looks it should like have. He ran fast. Yes. <laughs> or he jumped mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, so it was like, oh, this is actually not that complicated, and actually it's super fun. Mm -hmm. um, so I got really hooked on that, and I've made a bunch of mostly like shorter things. And I love the gifts because the idea with the gif is it repeats, mm -hmm. and it's fun to come up with a motion that can just be like a loop that loops forever. Because then it's like you're not even like it's not even that much shooting time to make something, but it can be like kind of mesmerizing mm -hmm. and something you want to like watch forever. 
Um, so I'm like, that's it's still kind of like my big passion right now, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I'm like always coming up with different different things to make. Can you see them mostly on your Instagram or your website? Yeah, you can see my stop motions on, there's a lot of them on Instagram or on my Facebook page um, or on Giphy, G-I-P-H-Y mm -hmm. dot com has, I have an account there and you can see all of the gifts, which is kind of fun because you like see them all going at the same time. Um, That's really fun. Yeah, yeah. But it's like my, it's kind of, I guess it's kind of my thing right now yeah. and I'm yeah, just super obsessed with it. Like I'll get an idea and then I have to like knit all the stuff Yeah. and then the next day shoot all the stuff and then kind of put it together. I usually use like Photoshop or something, yeah. um, which can make gifts mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's just like, it's so satisfying. Yeah, I love it. I just love the gifts. I love those houses. Which book are those houses? In? Those are not in the book, they're in a, just like a, an individual pattern. And there's something I have a little animation planned for. Actually, I made a little gift with them for Valentine's Day this year. Aww. There's two houses falling in love. Um, but This one has a tail. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do more they're, because they're a little bit larger projects. Yeah. They're a little harder to shoot. You know, I just need like a bigger set. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. But I like the idea of a house like walking around. Yeah. And like leaving town. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to do next with these guys. Um, so, but it might have to be like next summer or yeah. something that I actually. Yeah. Yeah. We that. need to get the baby out. Yeah. So, do you want to talk about Sesame Street? Sure. Yeah. Um, Sesame Street. I got to work with them last summer um, for a remake of this like very classic song called I Don't Want to Live on the Moon. Don't want to live on the moon. You know it. Yeah. Na, 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 na. yeah. Ernie sings it. It's sweet. Yeah, he sings it. Um, in the original, he's like, it's like Bert and Ernie, and Ernie's like looking out the window, and he sees the moon, and he like visits the moon. It's really cute. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what year it's from, but it's pretty Probably old. Probably the 80s. Yeah. That's when I was watching Sesame Street. <laughs> so they wanted to, me too. That's one, they wanted to redo that that little music video um, in a really different style, and they had these um, these lovely young singers, Lennon and Macy, mm -hmm. which who I wasn't familiar with, but I guess they're quite popular mm -hmm. on like YouTube and stuff. Um, so they did the song with Ernie, or actually the plan was like they were going to, and they wanted to find somebody who could like animate around it. Mm -hmm. And I and I don't think they were specifically looking for knitted stuff mm -hmm. or stop motion stuff, but um, I heard about the project um, and I submitted a proposal for based on this like star. Um, so like they're in each of the scenes, they're like talking about. They're talking about like it would be fun to visit the moon, but I don't want to live there because mm -hmm. I'll miss my people back mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. And I thought they could like have this prop that's like a knitted star that they're like that they like throw up and it like turns into a star in the sky mm -hmm. that could be kind of fun. So they accepted it, and it was like okay, now I have to like make this happen. Yeah. So I made like sort of a storyboard, and then the director of the real people, the singers, um, shot them against a green screen, and then I shot. I made like lots of things like there's fish because they go underwater, there's a moon obviously, there's an earth, what else, there's little lions, there's lots of stuff going on um, and shot photos also basically against a green screen um, and in stop motion but like a lot of it needed to also just be kind of like computer animated like a fish swimming across the screen. So did you just give them all the items and they took care of all the stop motion? No, actually, that would have been a good idea, <laughs> but we ended up, I, I have uh, someone I work with who's an animator who's great, like she actually knows what she's really doing and she has a degree in it and stuff. Mm -hmm. Her name is Maureen Boyle and on most of my like longer animations, like I work with her to sometimes like to shoot it together, but also like she particularly like does any like little special effects we need and she is good at adding sound and music mm -hmm, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So she was with me with this project all, all the way through. Um, and after I shot stuff, I would like send it to her, and then she worked extremely hard to combine like everything and mm -hmm. to make it look like fish were really swimming. Like there would be one fish, and she made it into a school of fish. Oh, wow. And, yeah, it was like she really did a lot of the heavy lifting. Yeah. But it was really amazing to get to not only to get to work with. I mean, Ernie, he's like a superstar. Yes. Um, and but like to be able to like have my concept for the video like seen through and it really did turn I mean it turned out 
amazing, I mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. I was like, really excited how it looked in the end. And you can find that on YouTube, um, on the Sesame Street channel, and it's called I Don't Want to Live on the Moon with Ernie, which is kind of a weird way the title of it. Yeah. Um, but then it like says Lennon and Macy in mm -hmm. parentheses, so mm -hmm. that's the version that I did. And I think it says that because there's a new algorithm with searching on YouTube and everything has to be in the title. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So that's why the titles can be a little funky. Yeah. I will put that link down below so you Good. can watch it. Good. I am obsessed with puppetry and Muppets. I've been to Sesame Street twice. Just loved my experience watching it. And I actually did a, <laughs> I did a video for babies called Evie's Adventures. And yeah. it was, I was the, well, they call me the play partner, but really I was the mom. And Evie was my baby. They're, they developed a puppet called Evie. And so I worked with actual Muppet puppeteers wow. who have worked on Sesame Street. That's so stuff. cool. And we were in Jim Henson's studio in, um, I think it's the Upper East Side. I just loved that experience so much because I learned so much about their job. Oh, yeah. And the crazy positions they need to be in in order to be alive, make that puppet alive. And just, I just love everything about it. That's so, amazing. So when I saw that you did that, I was like, how could I love Mochi more? <laughs> now she's working with Sesame Street. So that's so cool. That was a dream come true. Are you going to do some more stuff with them? I don't know. I mean, maybe. It's always yeah. kind of like they they have so much going on mm -hmm. and any number of things. Like, maybe. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of yeah. like a, we'll see. Yeah. Sort of thing. So what else? What am I missing? What's, what's now? You're having a baby. And, I am. And what's next? Well, uh... Is this a full-time business for you? It is. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually been kind of a challenge to even figure out, like, having one child, because it's my second, mm -hmm. and, like, how to still do it. Because I'm just so, I was so used to just, like, working always, whenever, mm -hmm. on everything, mm -hmm. and, like, I can't do that anymore, no. and that's hard. I know about that. And, like, right now, I'm, like, work, you know, work this amount of time, but also, like, all these doctor's appointments. Yes. <laughs> So it's, it's mm -hmm. been challenging, and I'm like struggling to like, I'd like to have some things ready for when I'm like taking some time off, but mm -hmm. even that, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. So it's a little hard to really super plan out, um, but I have talked to, something that I hope will happen is I'm talking to um, a uh, group, um, a musical group, mm -hmm. about doing a music video for oh, cool. them. And I really haven't done that before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, like, the Sesame Street is sort of like that, but, yeah, it's like a but good something primer. that's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's kind of early stages, yeah. and I'm hoping that that's something that we'll be, I'll be working on in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, I am knitting something for the baby. Like, that's important. Yeah, I think one um, thing. Maybe one. I don't have much to show. <laughs> no, it really is, like, one thing. But... Since I don't do clothes, I don't do baby clothes mm -hmm. um, or blankets, but I'm making a mobile. Oh, and that would be so find, sweet. I'm making all these shapes that none of them are like. I have one or two with eyes. Well, here's one with eyes. Aww. He's not anything yet, but I think it's going to be. Um, and that's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's going to be like a bug themed mobile. Yes. With like, I have a, like a little. Oh, here it is. See, I think this is kind of oh, cute, yes. like a little caterpillar. caterpillar. How cute. And yes. I'm going to use... She's um, going to love it. I'm going to use, like, twigs that I'm wrapping. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't see it on the video. But it's like you wrap the, the twigs with yarn. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's, like, colorful, and these hang down. Oh, and so sweet. And look down at her. So I'm kind of excited about that, even though it's, you know, it's, like, simple knitting stuff. But I'm going to make, like, a butterfly and yeah. bee. And I love like it. That. Um... And you can get your kits in local yarn shops on your yeah, website. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few in local yarn stores all over um, on my website. And I have a whole lot of patterns on the site and on Ravelry. Mm -hmm. and, um, and books, too. Books, too. I think you can get them on just anywhere. Anywhere books are books sold. Are sold. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's the whole phrase that people say, yes, right? Yes, it is. Get it anywhere books are sold. And uh, I think local yarn shops also have your book in there. Um, yeah, I think so. For sale, too. Yeah, mainly I think I'll just probably, I'm so into the animation that I think I'll just keep doing like even little ones that I can and putting them out there. Yeah. So hopefully like I'm not going to like totally disappear. And... I want to see a birth announcement gift. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. 
Well, I had such a fun time meeting you. I, I've been wanting to for a while, and this has just been really, really great. This is fun, Because I'm a fan. No. And uh, check out all her stuff, but leave her alone for a while, because she's having a baby. All right. She already had the baby. By the time you see this, she's had the baby. Everything Whoa. went great. That blows my mind. She's beautiful, and she loves her mobile. <laughs> okay. I'll take it. I just loved meeting Anna so much and I'm so happy for her and her family and her career and her success and look what she sent me home with. Oh, he just went diving. Look, it's a gnome and a speedo. <laughs> you did not have to give me that, but I feel so honored that I have an actual mochi knit by the actual woman who makes mochi mochi. So thanks Anna, I had such a great time meeting you and I'll see you guys next time, bye. Bye.